How to use stop limit orders on Binance. If you come to your Binance trading system, it may look a little bit different to this. It's just the layout settings in the top right. But whatever layout that you have, come to the order entry screen and you will see this option for stop limit. Why do we have this stop and what does it mean? I'll explain that right now and compare it to limit orders, which don't have this extra option with a stop price. A stop order gives an instruction to the system to enter an order of your choosing at a certain price, and that's different to a limit order. So as an example, if we are trying to sell some Bitcoin and we have a limit price of around 19,000, we could of course just use a limit order. And during a limit order, we're telling the system, sell Bitcoin at 19,000. So that's it, and it does that exactly for you. Now, if the price is above 19,000, which it is now, the system is going to sell out straight away for you because you've said sell Bitcoin immediately with a lower limit price of 19,000. The price is 30 and so it will sell it straight away for you at the current best price it can. A stop order is very different to that. A stop order, think of this stop right here as a stop or a trigger. And so the system only enters an order when a stop or trigger price is met. So only when that trigger price is met, then it enters the order as you tell it. So if the price gets to 20,000, then enter the order that I want you to enter. That's different than limit order, where you're entering the order straight away and it's working for you straight away. With a stop order, only if the price gets to 20,000, then enter exactly the same order for me, selling at 19,000. A stop is a trigger price at which your actual order is input. Here's how that works in practice on the system as well then. We'll have some examples both selling and buying. So for right here, you can see we are going to be a buyer of BTC and we will uh, obviously use the buy side right here. Now the stop price is a trigger price at which my limit order is going to actually get given to the system. So as an example, let's say we are trying to buy a little bit lower. So we want an order price of 25,000 and we are going to put the limit price at 25,000. So the trigger price, 25,000, is when my limit order actually gets input into the system. Until the price it reaches that, the order will not be working in the system. And I'm gonna just buy $15 of BTC right here, press buy BTC. As you can see, it just checks the order with you and it tells you down here, if the price drops to or below 25, then your limit order will be input. If I press confirm right here, you will now see a uh, stop limit working for me. And it tells me down here that if the trigger conditions are met, so the price is at or below 25, then my limit order will be input, which is to buy BTC at 25. But with a stop order, of course, that also works on the other side. So I can actually say, if the price reaches 35,000, then I want, you put, I want you to put a limit order in of 35,000 or 34,000 or 36,000, it's up to you. But I'm gonna press $15 right here again, press buy BTC, and as you can see, it checks, tells you the details, press confirm. Now, as you can see here, the order is not executed, but it is working for me. If you put a limit order in right here and just said, buy me Bitcoin with a limit price of 35,000, you would have bought that Bitcoin already because the price is below that. With a stop order, the order has not even been input yet because the trigger or the stop price has not been met. We can also do this on the sell side as well. And many people use stop limit orders as what's known as a stop loss order, which is to sell out at a small loss and prevent further losses if the trade moves against you. So as an example here, we can, of course, try to sell BTC much higher than the current price. So 35,000 with a limit price of 35,000 and the amount of BTC that you wanna sell. If we sell this right here, press sell, press confirm, you can see that order isn't in. Now, using this is slightly irrelevant because if you just use a limit order, it will have the same effect here because you don't need to use a stop order if you're trying to sell above the current price, a limit order would work just fine. However, on the downside, we can use a stop loss, which obviously protects us and gives us extra room in the trade. So if we switch this over to 25,000 and put the limit price at 25,000 and put the same amount of BTC that we wanna sell, if we were using a limit order here, we would sell straight away because the current price is 30. And so the system would say, I've got you a better deal than your lower limit. However, if we want to use a stop loss, 
and that is letting the trade run and get some volatility in there but eventually having that stop loss trigger below the price where we say we don't want to run this trade anymore we're losing more than we want and so we want to get out at a small loss we can use a stop loss or a stop limit as it's known. So 25 and 25, press sell BTC and press confirm. That order is right there for you. If you'd used a limit, you would have sold the Bitcoin already, but with a stop loss or a stop limit as a stop loss, you can see it's gonna work for you and only trigger that limit order when the 25,000 price is triggered. One key tip when using stop orders is that if you're trading in the spot market where everything is cash settled, you cannot double count the assets that you have. So if you only have one of Bitcoin or any other crypto, you cannot have a stop loss and a take profit both for that same one BTC because you're double counting the assets that you have on account and the spot market will not let you trade that. So many people use a stop order below the price as a stop loss and above the price as a take profit. But if you have one Bitcoin on account, you can't put both of those orders in because that is technically two Bitcoin that you're selling and you don't have enough assets on account to cover that trade. You cannot do that in the, st in the spot market, but you can do that in the futures market. If you wanna find out more about stop losses in futures markets, trailing stop losses and other orders, check the free videos in the description. Crypto Investor Course has lots of trading videos that go through every order type and strategies as well. So I'll link that below for you in the description. I'm James with Money's EG. Cheers for watching and I'll see you in the next one.